Hello, I'm Justin Cormack. I'm the CTO at Docker and I'm a member of the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee. And one of the things we really changed a lot in the last year in CNCF is the sandbox. So the sandbox is now a home for a huge variety of projects to um, experiment with new things in cloud native and innovate. And uh, it's, these are the projects you'll all be using in a in a few years time and some of you are using right now and they're great places to hack and develop and explore new ideas and we're really excited that now we have uh, over over 40 nearly 50 probably by the time you hear this uh, sandbox project and there's a huge diversity of them and I'm going to try and run through almost all of them in 15 minutes so let's go then Starting with databases. Schema Hero is a tool that takes your database schema and makes it into a Kubernetes object, and then you can uh, apply schema updates and so on, along with changes in your application code, just through GitOps and through, uh, you know, through your normal Kubernetes operations. We'll see this pattern of applying things as Kubernetes objects in a lot of these projects. Schema Hero supports Postgres, MySQL, Cockroach, Cassandra, and SQLite. So if you're using those, try it out. Next, we have streaming and messaging tools. Streaming data and stream processing is a really important part of cloud native applications, and lots of people are using them and um, getting a lot of value from that kind of architecture. Strims is a tool to help you run Apache Kafka efficiently on Kubernetes. So it's a Kubernetes operator that lets you manage the life cycle of Kafka deployments and scaling and things like that. Provega is a whole new streaming database design. Uh, it's in the same kind of family as Kafka, but it's designed to support uh, persistent storage, auto scaling, um, efficiency with a lot of partitions while delivering exactly one semantics and low latency all running on Kubernetes. Tremor is also a new event processing system. It's an early stage project written in Rust, one of uh, many Rust projects we have in CNCF now. We had a Rust day earlier this week, um, and it's exciting to see that community starting to work on interesting cloud native projects. So Tremor is designed to replace tools such as Logstash or Telegraph for getting JSON log data out into your system at high performance and high volume and it supports back pressure and rate limiting for a stable system which is obviously really important in production. The next landscape section is application definition and image building. Backstage is a really exciting project we were all really excited to see this when it came into Sandbox. Um, it's a Spotify project originally and it lets you build a whole developer portal for managing infrastructure with extensible UX and extensible service catalog and plugins that allow your teams to manage their own infrastructure from a simple UI. Kudo is a toolkit for writing Kubernetes operators. So if you've been excited about operators in this talk so far, take a look at it. It's got a set of existing operators you can use and modify. And operators let you control the whole life cycle of stateful applications, such as managing backups and scaling and all the complex bits of life cycle that are really important. Serverless Workflow is a specification with Java and Go SDKs for defining workflows for serverless applications. So it's a way to define how data flows between different serverless functions and how the events map and how retry and control logic works. Artifact Hub is a front end for finding artifacts such as Helm charts across multiple uh, actual backend repositories. It's not limited to Helm. It's being used by open policy agent policies, Falco rules, and all sorts of other cloud native pieces. Kubevert is a tool for running VM workloads, not just container workloads on Kubernetes. So if you haven't containerized everything and you want to run one set of infrastructure for all your applications, take a look and run run your legacy applications in the same infrastructure. Porter is an application packaging tool from the CNAB um, specification. So it bundles up a set of components with um, instructions for how to deploy them, how to upgrade them, and so on. It's a very generic specification, and Porter is, a, is the kind of tool that works with all these, um, all these CNAB things. And Telepresence is um, a useful tool for remote debugging your apps while they're actually running in Kubernetes in production or in staging. So you can 
debug on your local workstation using local tools while your application is actually running remotely in Kubernetes. Now CI and CD tools. Brigade runs inside your Kubernetes cluster and lets you use simple JavaScript programs to run tasks and pipelines and things. So you could run unit tests or Slack integrations or database updates, whatever you want to script, all sorts of tasks in JavaScript. So it's easy to use. Kep10 manages application lifecycle automation. So if you want to have a GitOps style delivery pipeline, but you don't want to roll out code unless it actually passes service level objectives, then this is what you need. So it can roll out from say staging to production if the code is meeting the quality gates. This takes us nicely into observability and the areas around that. So open metrics is standardizing the Prometheus um, format. Uh, so making an IETF standard. So um, it's not just the app, you know, they're just not just the format used by Prometheus, but it's also being widely used elsewhere because it's a really simple, easy to understand standard. Trickster is an HTTP reverse proxy and cache, but it's specifically designed around accelerating time series databases such as Prometheus. So if you're making a dashboard system, for example, um, it can make it much faster by caching frequently used data, but it can also um, add special optimizations that apply specifically to time series data, such as exactly aligning um, your time series requests on say one second boundaries to make them faster. Um, Open Telemetry is a telemetry service for traces and metrics and logs. Now this project it really shows what you can do in the sandbox. It was actually a merger of open tracing and open census projects um, to make a uniform interface for users. And it's seeing a lot of adoption as just applying for incubation now, but it really shows that you can, you know, projects can really morph and change in the sandbox and, do, and can, projects can, can work together and work, work out how to, how to grow. We also have a couple of chaos engineering tools. Uh, Netflix really introduced the chaos monkey years ago, and it's become a valuable part of people's tooling for breaking things at scale in production in controlled ways or uncontrolled ways. So chaos mesh has an operator that injects chaos into Kubernetes and, and Litmus has a set of CRDs and a toolkit to let you program your own chaos in Go. So if you want to make custom, custom chaotic things happen in your cluster, that's at a interesting way of doing it. So far we have one Kubernetes whole Kubernetes distribution in the sandbox. So K3S is built for IoT and edge use cases, which are becoming really popular with Kubernetes and a really growing area. So it's what's lighter weight environments, uses can use SQLite instead of etcd, and, and more things targeted at that kind of environment also runs well on ARM servers. Crossplane is a really cool way to expose any service API as a Kubernetes object and manage it. So you can manage resources in public and private clouds that your application needs along with your application in your Kube resources with a uniform API. So it's really, really interesting. Volcano is a batch scheduling system for Kubernetes. It's often used for ML and big data applications like Spark and TensorFlow. So if you're looking for better, better support for more advanced batch workflow, take a look. BFE is a layer seven ap application load balancer with support for things like HTTPS, obviously, and WebSockets and TLS and uh, flexible routing policies. The service mesh interface is a specification for service meshes. It covers the common feature sets like traffic encryption, telemetry, which everyone, everyone using service meshes is using. So it allows you to switch to a different service mesh that, meet, that meets the spec and use common tooling. Open Service Mesh is a simple Envoy-based service mesh that actually implements service mesh interface. So it's you know covers the covers those basics. Kuma is another Envoy-based service mesh uh, designed to bridge Kubernetes and virtual machines with a single control plane. Um, network service mesh is for people who need containers to different network protocols. So if you're using um, raw Ethernet or MPLS or L2TP, for example, like uh, lots of telco applications are, this is something that you might want to check out. CNI Genie lets you connect to different CNI, um, so Kubernetes networking implementations on the same cluster. So you can give pods connectivity to multiple CNI plugins. So if you're doing interesting things with networking, take a look at that. 
and Kube OVN lets you use OVN networks with Kubernetes. So if you're integrating into your enterprise network where you're using encapsulated packets, then you might want to use that as your CNI. We've got three storage projects in the sandbox. Longhorn provides replicated block storage and management. So, um, so that's useful if you, um, you know, if you need replicated highly available block stores. OpenEBS supports local or replicated storage volumes. It uses a fork of one of the Longhorn providers and some various other options. JubaoFS is not a block store, but it's actually POSIX and S3 compatible file-based storage if you're looking for file storage for your applications. Provisioning is another area where we've got several interesting projects. Metal Cubed, see the cool name, <laughs> Cubed. It's a provisioning tool that runs inside Kubernetes to provision bare metal hosts. It has an operator that takes talks to IPMI controllers and provision servers and adds them to your clusters. So that's interesting. And then Tinkerbell is another bare metal provision, provisioning project came out of um, Packet, now Equinix Metal, um, divides into you know, five components for managing different parts, DHCP, OS installs, and power and boot control and things like that. So in, very interesting project, uh, lots of work going on there. Open Yurt is another Kubernetes on the edge project. So you can see lots of edge work going on, supporting nodes that might go offline, um, edge clusters, which need to sync back to a cloud control plane. We've got, there's lots of different edge work at different stages because lots of people are doing Kubernetes at the edge. So there's lots of projects in CNCF to look out for if you're doing that. And now for something different. Cloud Custodian is actually a tool for policy definition enforcement in public clouds. So if you're using um, public cloud and you want to check, you know, your certificates are about to expire or check um, policies and um, on say machine images and storage bucket policy, then uh, use that. Which Brings us really into the whole security and compliance section. There's actually a lot of projects here. Um, I th a lot of these projects are really exciting. It's uh, great to see security projects in CNCF because um, it's um, one of the areas I'm particularly interested in. Cert Manager is an incredibly useful project which can manage all your Kubernetes cluster certificates and automatically renew them and so on. Entoto is a software supply chain security specification. So it's around about signing what processes have taken place with when you're building your software so you can verify it went through the right steps. Keylime is built on TPM2 software stack and is providing remote attestation and integrity measurement. So you can see that what's running on your machine is what's supposed to be running. Um, Parsec is another um, hardware security project platform abstraction for security it's short for um, it's designed to abstract over hardware cryptography to, uh, ha cryptography so if applications want to talk to hardware crypto modules on the machine it can use parsec curie fence is a web application firewall that can be deployed in envoy or standalone to control traffic reaching your application DEX is an OpenID Connect, an OAuth2 provider. Uh, so if you want to authenticate users into your cluster, that's incredibly useful. Caverno is a policy agent and mission controller for Kubernetes. Um, it's really a much simpler than open policy agent. It's designed for very simple use cases. If you want to, for example, just say, I don't want to run privileged containers, this might be easier for you. It doesn't have a whole programming language like open policy agent, but just has simple composable policies. And Athens is an X509 certificate manager to give applications dynamic certificates and provide service identity. So that's all the projects that were in the sandbox landscape when I was doing this talk. There were actually a few more that we just let in recently that didn't quite get into the landscape. Um, sorry, distribution, you didn't get in. And a couple of others that we let in and a couple of others that are going to be let in before KubeCon, no doubt. But the sandbox is a really exciting place for projects and it's where projects are, you know, again, the next generation of projects that you're all going to be using and coming from. And you can start using them now, start investigating them and uh, find something to hack on.